Welcome to the Ice Cream Convos podcast, where we serve delicious scoops of entertainment and celebrity news. I'm your host, Xaviera. And I'm your co-host, Carla. And as always, we thank you for tuning into today's show, and we welcome you to be a part of the show by dropping down in the comments wherever you listen to share your thoughts, views, and opinions on what we're chatting about. All right. So, Carla, how you doing, girl? I'm Let's good. Go. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Happy to be here. <laughs> now nah, I'm only playing. I'm good. How you? <laughs> But I am. I'm always happy. You know, when we podcast, this is always a great time. But I, I'm all right. How you making out? That's good. You sound like you were about to be like those people in church when they be like, giving honor to God, who is um, the source of my strength. You know, when they stand up to give their testimony. Yes. You sound like you was about to hit us with a testimony. But girl, I'm good. When I tell you, um, it's the third day of April that we are recording this podcast. And April has been kicking my ass. Oh, I man. thought March was ugly. But April, April no. is March's ugly cousin that come up from the summer from down south and want to fight everybody. You know what I'm talking about? You know the, be from the south though, but yeah, for real. <laughs> you know, living up top, everybody got that one cousin that come up every summer from down south. Yes, oh, yes. All right, that but I'm so just saying that's hilarious. That's, that's what April been giving me. But girl, I'm all right. I'm all right. All right. So, yeah, it's um, rain though. I'm oh, real quick. Yeah, April straight came in here with a bunch of rain like it's supposed to. Like, I don't know about down there, but it's literally been raining every day so Rainy far. Actually, it's started, yeah, I'm kind of, I need some sunshine now. I need some sunlight. Now, yesterday was really good. It was like 79 to 79 degrees yesterday. It was so Ooh. stupid. But then it's thunderstorm last night. So you know how it is. Like when it's really, really unseasonably warm yeah. and then it triggers that warm front. That and then, hot and cold. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, I remember that from a uh, science class with the right? front and the cold front. And then, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what the temperature is looking like out there today, but I got to drive to the city of Atlanta. So y'all pray for me because anytime I got to go into the city, it'd be some nonsense. Child. Yes. Yes, we will all pray. It'd be some nonsense when I got to go into the city, I promise. But anyway, um, I just want to start out today's show by um, giving a few RIPs. Um, Chance Perdomo. Chance Perdomo is an actor. I discovered Chance in Gen V. Gen V is a series yeah. on Prime Video and y'all, it is like... You know, like X-Men, how Professor Xavier have like, the, you know, the, the mutants. Mm -hmm. So imagine the young mutants that Professor Xavier had in his home with no home training. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about one girl had to throw if she throws up. Mm -hmm. No, she can make herself shrink. I think she has to vomit to make oh herself gosh. shrink. Okay. And she can get very, very small. But she had got really small and hopped in. And then <laughs> this dude that she was messing with wanted her to SMD. Okay. So she was like this she was like holding it like a pole. Oh my. <laughs> Stop playing. That oh my show God. is so wow. freaking out of pocket. It is so oh wild. My God. It is so good. I was not expecting that. That is crazy. Oh my. I had to tell Desi like, nah, you can't, you can't watch this one with mom. Nah. Because this one right here, a little too out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? Wait, but, God. Yeah. He passed away on, on a motorcycle. He was in oh, a motorcycle accident, 27 years old. 27 years old. It is. It's awful. I also want to take a moment to give um, a RIP to Vontae Davis, former NFL star Vontae Davis. He was found deceased in his grandmother's Florida home. 
I wasn't sure. I just at that I know he just was found dead. I was going to ask mm -hmm. you about an update um on that. And if, yeah, um, it was his grandma's house. Oh man. Yeah, 35 years a, old. Another young, another young. These lot like people are losing their lives or are leaving here so young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um I feel like every day. Every I mean, of course, day. every day it goes on, but I mean like people we know, well known people. Um yeah. Famous people were saying. I, I kind of feel like it's the Lord's way of just reminding everyone that tomorrow isn't promised. Yeah. You know, like you know when you see these kind of stories and you hear these type of things, it, it's a reminder to you that, you know, tomorrow isn't promised. So, True. but you know, okay, question. Can you truly, truly live like every day is your last? You, I, I don't think, I don't think you it's can logically live that way. I don't think you can either, but. Because if I felt like today was my last, mm -hmm. I'm going to empty what little bit of coin that lawsuit left me in my bank account. <laughs> and and I'm wilding out. I'm wilding out. I'm calling people to cuss people out that I would let people know what I really think of them. <laughs> that, you know, good, bad, That's and ugly. Funny. You know, yeah, if I love you, yeah. I'm gonna, you know, I love you. If it's bad, then I'm gonna have to let you know, like, hey, I'm finna leave this world. But when I get up to heaven, I'm gonna tell God to keep an extra eye on you because you cruddy. <laughs> I'm gonna tell the Lord to keep an extra angel on you because you real crazy. Oh, yeah. You may want to straighten up because there will be extra eyes on you from above. <laughs> um, you know, just they're yeah, just logically, and I think it's kind of morbid to actually live in a space of every day is every day could potentially be your last. Yeah, I think it, that's that's one of those things too, depending on how you look at it. Because you're right, it could be totally morbid, but if you're one of those people like that, um basically take like they always say you got to get out of your comfort zone right to mm -hmm. kind of like mm -hmm. so like if you're living i think if you look at it like all right i'm literally just going to live life like i'm not going to worry because honestly if, if i know it's my last day and i hate thinking about it like that i ain't worrying about nothing i'm literally just going to be in my happy place because i've realized like this is so it, it's it's weird um you know Nigga, so. i ain't worried about nothing I ain't worried about none. And that's all. Who's seen that song? Yes. I ain't worried about uh, none. Oh, wait. Look. I ain't worried about old. none. Oh, my gosh. How come I can't remember that? Who sings that? Now I'm going to have to look it up. That is bad. But hold Yo, on. I am officially getting old. Speaking but, of who sings what, mm -hmm. I last night I was... um. You know, JB, Destiny, and I, we were sitting downstairs, and we had watched Roadhouse on Prime Video, which is actually a really, really good movie. Of course, it's a remake or a re it's a remake reboot, however you want to describe it. But Jake Gyllenhaal did his thing. Um, love him anyway. But afterwards, I went into, let me go into my Apple music. I started pulling up old jams mm -hmm. and I played, oh, let me see what's in my search. I played it's the thuggish, ruggish ball. No, you didn't. Why <laughs> Destiny was in the back talking about it's the thuggish, ruggish. Girl, I felt she so knew that. She knew the song. You know why? Because on TikTok, the girl that she'd be like, it's babe and, and wish it's in the house. And oh, Tasha, right. right? Okay. Okay. She was on okay. TikTok. It's a thing now on TikTok where <laughs> people are analyzing that part of the song, saying which members of Bone she liked the most. So they was like, oh my God. <laughs> and so she's come across that. And so she knew the song. Oh my goodness. See, you know, I'm not part of the TikTok world. So I'm like, okay, that's the cool part. I love about TikTok though. It, it, it kind of, I see a few times where it's introducing like yeah, the, so the younger great. generation of songs. To... <laughs> and it was another bone song. She Did knew. you actually play like, the original one for her though? Like, because sometimes it's different too when they actually. No, it was the, it was the original because okay. then Tasha jumped in on the trend and actually sang it live on TikTok. Okay. Cause that's the end of the song, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think it was another bone song that I played that she knew. I think it was, um, Oh, I ain't worried What's about nothing. French Montana, too. I don't know why that, like... <gasps> oh, shoot. French Montana. I ain't yeah. worried about nothing. That was crazy. Like, That's why I ain't remember, because it's French. My brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong for that. You're wrong for that. It's French Montana. <laughs> you dead ass wrong. Uh, okay, so I want to start today's show by talking about Gerard Carmichael. Mm. Gerard Carmichael's new show, The Gerard Carmichael Show... Um, not to be confused with the Carmichael right, show right, that used to right. be on NBC that we all love. Gerard is basically doing his own version of the Truman show. And then the show comes on, on max on Friday nights at 11 PM. Mm -hmm. And in the premiere episode, 
Gerard Carmichael reveals that he fell in love with his best friend. And, and, and for those of you who may have missed the memo, Gerard came out as gay last last year, year before during his Rathaniel um, stand up comedy special. Mm. But Gerard Carmichael is a member of the LGBTQIA community, and he revealed that he fell in love with his best friend and mm. he told his best friend, I think, via text and um, how things became really awkward between them after he revealed his feelings. Mm. Well, said best friend happens to be Tyler, the creator, right. rapper and musician, Grammy award winning rapper. And right. Musician. Yeah. And Ger- Tyler actually responded to Gerard by calling him like a stupid B or something like that. And mm. so the show is basically a reality show. Cameras are following Gerard and giving us an inside look at Gerard's life. I, y'all know I personally love Gerard Carmichael and nobody can make me hate Gerard Carmichael. I met him, interviewed him. He was so gracious and sweet and kind to me. Oh. And until he does something egregious, I will stand 10 toes down with Gerard Carmichael. But this here reality show <laughs> is a lot to digest because we always talk about how you do not know these celebrities. You may listen to their music. You may watch them over the years, check out their interviews at the core base. You do not know these celebrities. Yep. And this was a reality check for me when watching Gerard Carmichael's reality show, because Gerard is a thought friend. (laughs) Gerard is a thought. For real? Gerard is a thought. And I feel (laughs) like there are a lot of stigmas placed or um, stereotypes placed on members of the LGBTQIA. And one of the biggest ones being that they are, um, what's the word? Promiscuous. Is that the okay. word? Yes. You have sex with yep. a bunch of people? Yep. Gerard is promiscuous. Really? And I feel like he is, <laughs> he is basically co-signing like some of the stereotypes. Gerard be on Grinder. <laughs> and be on like let's hook up and people come to his house and he be putting their feet in his mouth he be sucking oh wow for real he got booty butter at the house he nah be, stop he you playing she- Not your right. for real yes he had a man no, show yeah. up at his house with a mask on and like <laughs> like a voice disguiser all the- oh wow like, so Gerard- Abby, he, he he this is a real real this is a reality reality show oh Gerard be getting to it damn Gerard be getting to it like okay, he had people right. coming in and out, in and out. One guy, I think he could, I think he couldn't remember his name or something. It was something, but oh yo, Gerard be getting to it. And it's, I don't know if it was like a coping mechanism because okay, Gerard was rejected by Tyler. And you know how some d- people are. They get rejected by one person and, and they oh, try. Rejection's to, tough. Yeah. They try to be like Solange. I tried to fuck it away. <laughs> yeah. I put one in the air. I think if, that, man, if that's his best friend too, that that within itself is a whole another layer because now you didn't already express how you feel. How you go back to being best? Like, I don't know. So like That's I, my question for you. Now I'm your best friend. Mm-hmm. You, and I I love you really, really deep. I love you more. But I'm not in love with you. Have right. you ever had a friend, a close okay. friend, mm-hmm. like cross the line? And I say cross the line, but I don't mean it in a negative way, but just have a, a regular friend mm-hmm. who you could tell developed feelings for you okay. that went deeper than friendship, even if waving my finger (laughs) even if they did not admit it to you okay or have you had someone actually admit it to you let's go that's our topic you know what fortunately no because i would i wouldn't even know how to deal with that like i don't i've never had a a friend like tell me or Mm -hmm. i don't like even thinking no male or female no nope thank Mm. god no, not close friends. No, it was always like, even, and you know, I had a lot of male friends. It was yeah. always like, either we, I'm, I feel like I'm going to say too much, but it was either like we kicked it or we, if it did take a, that space, physical space, it yeah. was nobody was in love with each other. Okay. It was like, you here, I'm here. Yeah. Let's just go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we friends. <laughs> I, can, I trust you. I know you. I'm just saying. We friends. I'm, right. I'm just saying. Right. You know what I mean? But just not where it gets like, 
I'm in love with you. Yeah. yeah. That's heavy. Like, I don't even know how, like, I would even really respond. Have you ever been through that? No, I haven't had a friend that, um, yeah, I never had a friend just be like straight up, like I'm in love with you or I didn't develop mm. feelings for you. Now I did have a friend that I felt like okay. things got a little bit weird and, and if you felt that way, it did. Cause you know, you be, you, you be knowing. Yeah. And she asked for an invitation to my private parts one time. Okay. And I was like, um, girl, what in it? It's about time for us to eat dinner. Speaking of eating, I was just about to cook. I was just about to cook. Yes. I tell you everything wow. in life. Go back to an episode of Martin. It do. It do. But I know I was damn. just about to cook. Yeah. yeah. You're a quick, oh my God, gosh, you're a quick thinker, too. You're a quick, like, you quick oh. on your toes. So it sounds like a joke, but I really hit her with the. I was just about to cook. <laughs> I did. It sounds like a joke, but I was like, you know, <laughs> ain't it time for us to eat. Let me go. Cook. Let me go whip us up. Some. <laughs> oh my gosh! Did she take the rejection well, or like how? Yeah, it was just like, all right, then. Oh, but, all right. But I will say, personal, and the friendship continued, right? Okay. But I will say, personally, I always felt nervous about us being in spaces alone. Okay. You didn't want to be, you didn't want that to happen again. Because I didn't want her to be like, so about, um, yeah, what I had go, asked you. To, yeah, right. like I don't, I didn't, yeah. Try to run it back. Now yeah. I understand that. I understand. Yeah, I felt awkward about us like being yeah. alone. But that was a very interesting, that's tough. That's yeah. different. I posed the question to um the ICC friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I was really, really surprised at the amount of responses that I got. And a lot of people really said like, yeah, like I've, I've been through this. I've experienced this. Let me just, That's um, tough. let me see. So I wrote, have you ever had a close friend fall in love with you? And someone said, yeah, he's a man though. Um, someone said, yep, had babies with him. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Um, said yes. And lost oh, my that. best friend of 17 years. I tried it, but it, but I wasn't into it and it shattered us. That's sad. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the, that part. Like, mm -hmm. because your best friend is your best friend. Like there's a different type of, you tell them everything. They know you don't. Mm -hmm. So then like, if, you one is feeling some type of way about one's in love and the other one's not. Like, how do you go back to how do you go back that? to that friendship? The other the person that did the rejecting or said no, now mm -hmm. they're gonna feel like they're gonna be walking on eggshells every time they're around you because they're gonna feel like I don't want to hurt you know, because they're still a best friend. Yeah, and then the other the other person that was rejected as far in the friendship is gonna feel like, How dare they? Mm -hmm. I think that's how you would feel because you're looking at the best friendship part like is that does that make sense like I don't yes, know. yes it definitely makes sense and for me it's just the risk of losing the friendship and yeah. changing the friendship because yeah. I will say this um when you have a best friend like I look at you for example I've, mm -hmm. I have two best friends I have you and mm -hmm. my girl Tasha like y'all mm -hmm. my y'all my y'all my girls right right and like with you there is nothing on in the on on this planet, in this world that I feel like I can't say to you or tell you, right? right. Yeah. Like if I was here. like, girl, I felt like yesterday, I just felt like drinking some gasoline. You'd be like, okay, um, have you had your taste buds? Like, there's just <laughs> nothing that I can't tell you. Right, so if one day here. I woke up and felt like I was in love with you, I feel like the way our best friend our best friendship is set up, mm. I would be, I would call you and I'll be like, girl, you ain't gonna believe this shit. <laughs> You would be like, on the lines or something like that. I, yeah, I was like, girl, you ain't going to because that's the way our friendship is <laughs> right, set up. Right. I would be like, right. girl, you ain't going to believe this. Yes. You're going to be like, what? What, Bestie? What happened? Yeah. What happened? I'm going to be like, girl, I, f I feel like I'm in love with you, right? But <laughs> I already know how you are. I already know how I am. Right, I already know right. how this thing going to go. So listen, if I just be looking at you a little crazy sometime or just hugging you a little <laughs> longer than usual, don't pay me no mind. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. Lord working on me. I'll be all right, right after... That's the way our friendship yeah, is straight set up. up. Yeah, yeah. Now, the way our friendship is set up, you could be like, 
Bad. How about I've been thinking about this since last week? You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, but we're it's just, just the open, the, the it's transparent. It's the friendship. It's yeah, like it's I different. guess it's the way the friendship is structured. Right. It's the way it's set up. It's the way, like I said, I feel like there's nothing I can't say to you. Yeah, same thing here. It's, and I'm going to say it to you. Wait, or you'll be like, girl, you know what? You're so crazy. Just, <laughs> just give it one more week. You'll be over me. Like. <laughs> It's just the way that's we us set though, up. but we right, but it's just that's why I said like as far as like going back to Ger- like how do they go back to because Ger- everybody mm-hmm. ain't like us. I just mm-hmm. right. how do Gerard how does Gerard and Tyler now go back to the same best friendship? Because Tyler gonna be feeling like and you and Tyler his response is crazy. Like his, that is his response so- was enough. <laughs> I couldn't be his friend no more just based off of the way he responded to nah, me. Nah, me neither, yo. If you, that was, that was, I, as much as like we play, I would be like, that's horrible. Yeah, because he could have at least been like, oh, boy, too soon. when will I too see soon. you or something yeah. like Yeah, like too soon. Like that's something down the line you say. Yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> and then the thing was, when you look at Gerard, Gerard was physically hurting like yeah that's that that sucks if you've ever really been in love with somebody yeah heartbreak is physical man listen then when they say that that is truly it the pain from it and you'll be you'd rather somebody punch you in your chest yes you feel what i'm saying because you know after a while that 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 burn that sting that hurt gonna go but that Mm -hmm. heartbreak thing that shit lingers so i wonder like at what point because gerard the the way Jerron developed feelings for tyler and maybe some people just naturally love hard but yeah some people do it sounds like he does i'm not trying to make any assumptions about their friendship Mm -hmm. but gerard kind of carried himself like someone who had been led on Mm, and then so? drop like a hot potato. It could, and that could be the case too. See, I didn't see that physical. Like I didn't. Like I'm so Girl, glad that you saw. Was folded. That's he was different. Li- he was literally folding up. Like really, first he, he was sitting up, and then as Tyler, you know, he was like, "Well, you oh, know," wow. he was trying to have a conversation with him, and Tyler was like, kind of like. I mean, like, what you what you want me to say? Like, what you? And then Gerard went down to like putting his hand right here. Then his uh, hand went over his mouth. Then he crossed his legs. Then he crossed his arms. He literally was folding up in real wow. time. It was so sad to watch. Yeah, and, that is sad. And I have a soft place for Gerard again because I love Gerard. Um, not in love. He don't want. He don't want. He don't want what I got on the menu. No way. <laughs> he don't want what I got on the menu. But I and I, if I could have reached through my television and just grabbed him, I would have grabbed Gerard like around his waist and just hugged him while he was sitting in that chair. Oh, yeah. Because he was just folding. And if you ever up. been a heartbroken before, you know how it feels. Mm-hmm. You get I told me, I don't right. know if I, I ever told y'all about that time that dude broke up with me because he said he was in the light skinned girls now and I was uh, too dark. I'm trying to remember if you told that part. I feel like I know I know the story. I'm trying to remember if you girl, if you, you talking think, about hurt. Yeah. Oh, I was hurt. Yeah, that's that's a hurt. I was thing. like, what? What? No, I'm not even gonna say that, but I was just like, mm, okay. <laughs> and now I look at him now and I'm like, look at yeah. that. I died yeah. a brown. Yes, I'm gonna say it's always something no good. Okay. You know right. what? Anyway, that usually makes all right. That, yes, they got a nerve to reject some damn body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Child rejection is the Lord's protection. Yeah. Listen. Okay. It, it, you don't know that till you know till you get older. Mm-hmm. All right, Carla. Well, I guess we can go ahead and take a break, and then when we come back, I have a few more stories that I want to get into. Today will be a quick podcast because, like I told y'all, I got to go to Atlanta, so I at least need an hour to go in my prayer closet and get my mind, body, and soul mentally prepared to hit the streets of Atlanta. <laughs> but um, let's go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Stevie J, Fifty Cent, Daphne Joy, Sweetie, Al B. Shore, and more. Um, but before we go to the break. Carla, I'm in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? You stupid. What do you say? Wait. What, uh, what, what you Think you stupid? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll be right back. All right, ICC friends, we are back. So, Carla, a lot has went on since the last time we were on this podcast, and at mm. one point, I didn't even know where to begin. Mm. But I'm going to start with the easier route. Saw Weedy. 
Um, y'all, y'all like to call her Saweetie, but right. I call her Saweetie. <laughs> Saweetie recently did an interview with Big Boy, mm-hmm. and she revealed in the interview that she has to listen to gospel music every night, or she will experience um, sleep paralysis demons. Wow. Now, some of y'all know it as a witch riding your back or the devil riding your back. But um, for those who are not familiar, hold on. Let me give them a little bit of tea on this one. Yeah, because (laughs) uh, I'm listening. Because you know you're going to have some folks, especially because she tagged demons on the end of it. Like sleep paralysis is a real real thing. Yeah. Um, So... Sleep paralysis is basically, it's a state of sleep where you feel like you are um, unable to breathe, unable to move, unable to speak. In a lot of cases, it feels like there's a weight on your chest and it's linked to sleep paralysis demons, or some people interpret it as sleep paralysis demons Mm -hmm. because um, it feels like someone is literally sitting on your chest. And some people believe it's demons that right. are, you know, sitting on your chest. And um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, have you mm. ever experienced sl- sleep paralysis or sleep paralysis demons? Yes, I have experienced sleep paralysis. I ain't, I ain't never speak. I don't know nothing about the no demons. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I don't know nothing about that. Nothing. We stay, they stay in their lane and I stay in my lane. But. So tell me, okay, so tell me, do you recall like the experience? Uh, yeah, I still, no, I, let me please knock on wood because I haven't experienced it in a while. Me a too, years. me too, me but too. It's been the most horrible, horrible feeling. My sleep paralysis usually happens if I'm sleeping on my back. Amen, Lord. There it um, is. Mm-hmm. And it's usually like, I don't know what's weird for me. I can't move my limbs. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's the part that I don't like. So and then I'm trying to wake myself up and I can't I'm doing everything in the world. And I and I almost I hate to say this, but it makes me feel like I'm like in between like life and death, like am I like mm-hmm. I'm about to slip out mm-hmm. and never come back. That's why I'm mm-hmm. trying to get up. Like you feel that mm-hmm. way too? Yeah. Why that's scary though. It is scary. Um for me, when I experience it, I experience it a n- sleep paralysis a number of ways, but okay. I think I can only recall one time. And this was like, I probably, I was still living at my grandma's house. So okay. this is like early teens. I okay. remember the one time where I literally felt like I couldn't get up. I couldn't move. I mm-hmm. couldn't scream. You, you're yeah, trying to scream. Like you yep. can't scream. Yep. Um, all of those different things. And it is. It's terrifying, actually. Very. And my grandma always told me, like, anytime you have a bad dream, anytime that you, you know, I was one of them kids that'd be like, he's a monster in my closet. <laughs> you know, or I think a monster gonna come get me. <laughs> and my grandma, I was raised by my great grandma, and she would always be like, just say the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Now, right. if you can't get the blood of Jesus out, just yell Jesus, right? Okay. Because Jesus, the, the name of Jesus. <laughs> is enough <laughs> to clear out the demons in your room, Lord. <laughs> they are clear out. Just oh, oh wait, I got something else to tell you too. Mm-hmm. Let me pin it. Let me pin it. So anyway, so in that particular moment, I couldn't even say Jesus yeah. because I couldn't speak, I couldn't scream, I couldn't yeah. do anything, I couldn't move. And Saweetie claims that she has always had an unnatural connection to the spirit world. She says she doesn't know how, you know, but she's always had experiences with this, you know, the spirit world. And that if she is sleeping alone, now here's the irony. If she's sleeping with somebody, she doesn't have to listen to the gospel music. They're going to leave her alone. Okay. So I'm like, well, she's romantically linked to YG, and the demons probably thought to themselves, "Girl, you one of us already in here, so we just gonna let you have it." <laughs> Yo, you probably, Joe, <laughs> we gonna let you have that. One of our representatives oh, is already in oh, here. Oh my god, we got it. We'll be back tomorrow, <laughs> unless you pull up Marvin Sapp. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you wrong. We'll for that. be back. You better get the wine out. We'll be you back. Wrong you wrong. But <laughs> can you imagine to a point where having 
ex- just whether whether or not you believe it's of the spirit world or if it's of demons, can you imagine being at a point in your life where you experience sleep paralysis so much? Like she's mm. literally said on a regular basis every single night if she, she does not have, have like system. narcolepsy or something, she might need to go get that looked out. I'm not, I'm a spiritual person and I'm not going to go against God. Like I'm not saying that it's that, but some mm-hmm. things are too. There are medical reasons for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I also read that, that sleep paralysis could be linked to a bigger medical condition depending right. on how you experience it or what it is. Right. But um, somebody said, well, her music is not a reflection of her having an, a, a tough up. nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> Just the fact that you said sweetie and gospel music threw me off. Okay. It threw me. I'm dead serious. Oh. I don't mean no harm. Oh. And I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen. If, I ain't judging. I was, we all, I'm not perfect. I know. Right? I know. We, we're not judging. But we ain't judging. But we judging. Right. So my thing is. <laughs> If I'm experiencing sleep paralysis every single night, mm. unless somebody's in the bed with me, I would be out like, that's my best friend, J E S U S. That's my best friend, J E S U S. You ain't going to play with me. All my hottest songs <laughs> going to be Jesus. Y'all, no, seriously. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I guess it doesn't make sense to me. And I, probably why I'm not taking her seriously. Oh, wow. And that might be wrong, but like that's, listen, I'd start with the music, the power is in the tongue. Okay. <laughs> the power is in the tongue. Start with the music, baby. <laughs> and or either let that little demon you chose sleep in the bed with your air. Like, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But speaking of Jesus, mm-hmm. bestie can't nobody tell me. Destiny and JB think it's a joke, but can't nobody tell me. I saw G- I saw Black Jesus on Easter Sunday. Did you wear at Lennox Mall? Oh, you saw Ned. <laughs> you saw Ned the one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what JB said. I saw Ned. Nah, Bessie. Let me tell you. So we had dinner with fam. We had brunch with family on Easter Sunday. Okay. And the part of town that we were in, I was like, "Well, Desi, you know what else do you want to do?" And she was like, "Hey." I looked it up. Linux Mall is like only 15 minutes away. So I was like, all right, we can go to Linux Mall mm-hmm. on Easter Sunday. I'm pretty sure people will leave their guns at home today. <laughs> so we get over to Linux Mall and we are pulling into like, we haven't even gotten into the parking lot yet. Mm-hmm. We pulling into like where you come down and you drive past the front of the mall to make your way to the parking deck, right? Mm-hmm. And as we're driving, I look up and I see... A black man. It's he's given Shaza. Okay. But his dreads aren't as long as Shaza. Green eyes, okay. dressed in look like royalty clothing. It was black, trimmed in gold. Okay. And I looked and I said, Y'all, there go black Jesus. <laughs> and he looked at me and he did something with his hand. Cause I just stopped my car in the middle right. of the street. I was like, that's black Jesus. And he looked at me and he gave me a nod of affirmation Uh-oh. and he did his hand like, go on, child. <laughs> and I started driving. Are and I was serious? like, Jesus just told me to stuck. go ahead. So like, Everybody now, thinking JB, you're crazy. JB and Des in the car, like they hollering. Yeah, yeah. Because they like, yo, they look like black Jesus. Oh, so so they- then JB was like, well, why is black Jesus at Linux Mall? And I'm like, if Jesus going to go to any mall on Easter <laughs> Sunday, it need to be <laughs> Linux. <laughs> The way they Straight cut it up. up. Straight up. Yeah, because he could have been at Mall of Georgia. He could have been at Mall of Georgia, but he chose Lenny. Yeah, you might be. Yeah. Okay. You, because he, I be know, about Lenny. he know where he need to be. Yeah. And I was like, I need to hurry up and park because I need to go. Dusty was like, Mama, please leave that man alone. I said, I need to go get blessed by Black Jesus. <laughs> I was like, I, on Easter Sunday, Black Jesus. Right. So Destiny, like, Mama, please leave that man alone. I said, no, 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 no. So, we park in the car and I see black Jesus walking away from the mall. Mm. So I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm about to miss him. So we get out the car. We like walking a you little really, split. really running him down. I really wanted to talk to black Jesus. I wanted, no. I needed to, I wanted to hear his voice. Right. Mm. So by the time we got out the car and hit the sidewalk, he was on mm. girl. He was gone. That junk blew JB's mind so bad. Nah, you playing. J- it blew JB's mind so bad. JB was like, listen, 
I, I, he was like, I was, I was going to kiki and giggle with you about black Jesus until he just disappeared on this sidewalk. That's I don't know where nuts. he went. Are you serious? Thin air gone. Poof. That's nuts. All I have is the memory of what I saw. And the, he is That's not crazy. Jesus Nobody took a picture or nothing that y'all be hanging on y'all walls or y'all be putting up in the front of y'all vestibules at your church. No, no. Jesus is giving Shaza mixed with a little Cree summer. <laughs> <laughs> Bestie, damn, that's a shame you get a picture. See, it's messed with my spirit. I I, yeah, that would have messed with me too. Like Jesus, ever since that would have messed with me. And do you know when we got to the mall and got to the door, it said this mall is closed today. What? It said this mall. I said not Black Jesus closing down Lenox Mall. He probably (laughs) saved some lives that day. He probably (laughs) saved our life that day. Stop playing, yo. It said this mall is closed. Damn. I wish I would have got a picture of him. Now I'm thinking to myself, did Black Jesus know the mall was closed before he came, or did he come and and, and shut give the mall? Somebody down. shut the mall down. Let me find out. Let me find out. Yeah, hmm. I gotta laugh because I wasn't there, but hmm. I believe you. I hmm. believe you. Once you said like he wasn't on, he just you didn't know where he went. I believe you. Yo, the way he looked at me, damn, he just affirmed all my blessings. Oh my gosh, there it is. Hmm. All right, y'all. So y'all know we got, well, before we get into this, um, just a quick note, Gypsy Rose split from her husband, but the good news is he made it out alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) He made it out alive. Usually people don't leave Gypsy alive. (laughs) Body bags. That's a positive point. Yeah. That's a positive out of you got your life. But you know, can I just say this? Listen, I know Gypsy Rose been through hell, right? Mm -hmm. With her mom. Who did was that considered munch munch munchheiser munch munching? Munch, yeah, I can never pronounce it. I can't either. Like munching munching heisers. <laughs> munch, it's not like a beer. Yeah, munching heisers <laughs> serve cold. Um, munch. I don't. I I don't know. I I just don't know how to say it. Is yeah. munchheiser syndrome? Yes, yeah, or something of that nature. And I know that's Gypsy good. went through all that nonsense with her mother, mm-hmm. but. And I know, you know, the whole thing with the boyfriend, she got the boyfriend and I don't know if she coerced the boyfriend. I mean, there's different versions of the story, whether or not she told the boyfriend to kill her mama or talked him into it, whatever, whatever. At the end of the day, her mama is dead, the dude in jail and Gypsy is out, got married and was talking about her husband. Her husband got good D. So the D must have meant divorce because now they're (laughs) separated. But it's, it's so many lessons in the Gypsy Rose story that I don't even know where to begin. But I will tell y'all, or I will say that I do not understand why y'all have celebritized this damn girl. Uh, yeah, it's still kind of weird. There is nothing about her that she should receive extra attention, yeah. celebrity treatment, opportunities, not- nothing. At the end of the day, regardless of you know, the mistreatment. She could have convinced the boyfriend to help her go to the police or something. Yeah. Murder your mama. Yeah. That's, that, but it's, it shows you the type of world we're in right now. Like the heroes, <laughs> the people, I, I mean, that people, the, the select who people quote unquote make celebrities are like, it, it's nuts. It's, it's be, like, we're literally rewarding badass behavior. Absolutely. And I know that Gypsy didn't physically kill her mother, but good. But it does a lot of the whole thing, which is worse because now he doesn't kill without you orchestrate. Okay. All right. I just don't understand why y'all made this girl famous. Yeah. And people be in the comments like, I just wish her the best. I just, wait, what? Nuts. Uh, I wish Gypsy Rose, whatever the Lord see fit for her. Exactly. Back Period. At Linux. <laughs> yes. The side yes. Gypsy Rose needs. That's what I hope she gets. Yes. Period. But I just don't understand like yeah. the way y'all become. But you know and what? Y'all not going to make me understand it either. No. This is- no. <laughs> not at all. Just save your breath. <laughs> save your breath. John, I do not care. I'm not yes. interested. All I know is I'm tired of y'all pushing this girl in my face. Straight up. If anything, so y'all gave that. That her more attention said. than y'all gave Centoya Brown. Yes. No, that's facts. That needed to be said, though. I'm I'm actually Zob, I'm actually glad you said that. That's you made a great you. point. That needed to be Get said. Get Gypsy the F out of my face, y'all. Her. Her Please. and them teeth. <laughs> 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 I ain't stunning it. <laughs> I ain't. Oh, gosh. <laughs>
Um, a few things. Mm-hmm. So I'm not even going to deep dive on this because I took a deep dive on um, Friday night during our Friday night Facebook chat. Please be sure to join me on Friday nights at 10 p.m. on Facebook where I do a Friday night yeah. chat and I deep dive into whatever topics Carla and I don't discuss on the podcast. But I did a deep dive into Albie Shore and oh, why Albie Shore Lord. gets on my last child, child, child. nerve. Yes. All of us. Me, I know they had a short get on mine. God damn. So even after he wrote this letter, his public letter to Quincy, and mm-hmm. I basically, during my live chat, and it is available on YouTube, if you go to the Ice Cream Convo's YouTube channel, I ran down how I'll be sure to me is nothing more than a 80s, late 80s, early 90s R&B singer who transitioned into radio, but will do anything for attention. Yes. Attention this seeking is, ass oh mo- mofo. God, <laughs> I'm talking about. I'm being that respectfully. <laughs> disrespectfully from me. I'll be sure will do any and everything to seek attention. And it it's almost like a disease at this point. Yeah. So even after I laid out all the different reasons why I feel like I'll be sure is an attention seeking Negro mm-hmm. wake up Saturday morning to see a clip of him speaking at an event on Friday where he said, when you guys find out the truth about why I was in a coma, you're going to want to call Homeland security. Oh boy. Uh, he he he's it's so sickening and it's it's just sickening at this point. It I'm really releasing is. a documentary and the truth will be exposed in the documentary. Here's what here's how I'm mm-hmm. gonna chop this up real nice and quick. Mm-hmm. If I thought for a millisecond, and I don't even know what's smaller than a millisecond, maybe a microsecond, that somebody <laughs> tried to have me killed. It's not going to be in a documentary. It's going to be in a police doc. Exactly. Exactly. Y'all be killing me and irking me so bad, taking things to the the court of public opinion. Which don't have no, it has no, means nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Like you just, and it's like, if you truly, truly believed, that Sean Diddy Combs has something to do with you being in a coma, not your obesity, not your gastric sleeve surgery, not your liver failure, not your kidney failure, not your diabetes, not all of these other health conditions that you mm. have laid out over the years. Right. Like you had a hernia and a hematoma. Tell me how an N word give you a hernia. <laughs> Tell me how somebody gives you a hernia. Try to kill you. <laughs> so yeah. then I had someone argue that there are poisons and medications that can be ingested, poisons mainly, that can be ingested that can eventually cause organ failure and organ malfunction and have things. I saw a clip this morning of Claudia Jordan saying with her chest. That when doctors open Albie Shore's body, that many of his organs was liquefied. What? I'm trying not to say that. Nah, anything. you lying. Nah, I ain't nah, t- ain't no. Okay. That's bo- okay. Are you serious? Hold on. This is how far we going. Like people really is like this delusional. Okay. Here we go. And I'm just like liquefied for real. Liquefied. Girl, liquefied. Oh my. Where is it? Here we go. Listen. Albie Shore and Diddy are the only ones that are alive from that record company, right? The only ones that are alive. Allegedly, Heavy D was working on a book about his life, dead. And, and this is all on the internet. You, uh, I think Jaguar talks about this. Mm-hmm. Um, Andre Harrell supposedly was going to tell about his life, dead. Albie Shore supposedly was working on this before and then went into a coma. I remember this. Albie Shore is a friend of mine. We used to work out together in LA. I know him. Right before this coma, y'all, he was training for those celebrity boxing matches and then falls into this coma and he almost died. Like they said when they opened up his insides and did the surgery, it was liquefied. So when things like this happen in your life, will you be 
Stop, 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 stop. I can't hear no, I can't listen to more of that. I have never gone to medical school, but I know for a fact if your organs are liquefied. Cue up there with black Jesus. You up there, you at Lennox Mall with black Jesus disappearing on the sidewalk. You, it's, I have thrown in the towel. Grown ass people are really taught and saying it. Uh, come on, man. Yo, I am. Uh, I, I I will say this. I have reached a new level of perplexion. And I don't even know if that's a real word. <laughs> but I have reached a new level of perplexion of what mm. black folks will believe. Did you notice yeah, how no, for right real. before she said, she said, I'll be sure is a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. We was in the gym together. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was training for celebrity boxing. And, and then he fell into a coma. And when they opened his body, they said, Claudia Bunquisha Jordan, I'm going to need you to tell me who's they. Right. I'm tired of that. I need everybody. I need yeah. one <laughs> medical document. Do people, do bl black people, melanated people. All you got to say is they to us, though. They is everything. They is everything. They. But my beautiful melanated black people, mm -hmm. even the ones that I don't want to claim as family because y'all give me secondhand embarrassment in public. <laughs> if doctors open Albie Shore's body and saw liquidation mm -hmm. with medical experience and medical training and medical schooling, if anything looked awry in our Albie Shore's body upon right. opening it outside of met regular medical situations, don't y'all know hospitals and doctors alert the authorities? Yeah, I, that's why I can't. I can't even entertain. It's so hard to entertain it. It's so hard to entertain this. Like, so was Albie Shore gotta... about to buy NBC too? <laughs> was Diddy about to buy NBC? No, like he he he, he called Ciroc out for uh, oh yeah, did he, did, did, yeah, yeah did he did he called out Ciroc? <laughs> Therefore, they sent the military police to his house, the raid his house for sex trafficking because he called out the liquor company. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, the same liquor company he didn't like, even, he wasn't even doing business with back in the '90s when I was hearing stories about him. <laughs> That same liquor. Right. Thing. And I'm I'm good. I'm good here. I'm here for a good conspiracy. But some y'all, y'all just flat out just lying and, like, and, and they don't even make the conspiracy theories good. Good like, no give more. Me right. I gotta sit in the corner and be standing in the corner sense. of my bedroom, like yes. no word. And then it's the way that y'all tie. Yo, everybody wasn't writing a book, my G. Right. Y'all swear everybody was writing yep. a book. Yep. And my thing is, what happened? Okay, if all if Andre Harrell was writing a book, if Cassie was oh, not where's Cassie, the uh, stuff that where, Kim are, where, Porter, that? where are the manuscripts? Exactly. Exactly. Where are they? Yep. Oh, I, they buried them with them. <laughs> Heavy D writing a book. Did do y'all not remember when Heavy D got them real bad <laughs> blood clots on that airplane? Right. Right. Heavy D, another beautiful human being, incredibly talented, yeah. obese, diabetes, yeah. yeah, a number of health conditions. Yeah. Some things are are they are every I, that that drives me crazy too. Like that we're in a place where as soon as someone loses their life around someone that there's some type of whatever. Uh, you know, here come the conspiracy theories, especially the gatekeepers. Here, they think can, can I throw can I throw a conspiracy theory out there though? Mm. And I'm gonna do it responsibly, right? <laughs> Let's talk Uptown Records because Uptown Records seems to be the foundation of all this BS, right? Mm -hmm. Uptown Records, you had Diddy, you had Andre Harrell, you had Heavy D, you had Al B. Shore, you had Kim Porter was a secretary, you had all these people at Uptown Records, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think those four or five people ran the whole MF and label? <laughs> right. Right. We never talk about the people that worked at Uptown that's still alive. Mm -hmm. Because exactly. that don't fit the narrative, right. right? Right. But also, we talk about the biggest names that came out of Uptown Records, right? Mm -hmm. So the biggest names got the biggest bags, correct? Yep. And when I and when for for those of you who may not be well versed, bags mean money. We're talking <laughs> in the sense of money, monetary. Um, you know, we're talking monetization. Um, at that particular time, is it fair or is it a reach to say 
The top people at a record label during the peak of that record label would have been partying, drinking, drugging, living, mm -hmm. sleep, living their life on the edge, sleeping less, like mm -hmm. all these different things. Airplanes, airplanes can cause embolisms. Yeah. Like, all these different things. You're on yeah. a plane every other day. Y'all yeah. don't really know the impact that flying has on your body. Yeah. Going into different air pressure. You don't know people's like, pre-existing conditions. Like it's so many different. It's just conditions. so much. Conditions. If you have that type of money, you eat in the way you want to eat. You drink in mm. the way you want to drink. You drug in the way that you want to drug. Y'all, listen. I know that Diddy is the big, big bad boogeyman of the music industry, but the good lord, even the boogeyman let Freddy Krueger get some work. The boogeyman <laughs> let Jason get some work. The boogeyman let Chucky work. The boogeyman let other people get some smoke yes too. yes facts like i just need y'all to think logically and then some of y'all will say this it's one a... really this one this would really get me mm -hmm. after they because you know they said kim was writing a book my here's my thing Put more respect on the Porter family's name that if they believe Kim died under suspicious circumstances, that they would have did something. Right. About. Yeah, for real. I think that's terrible. That's probably the worst one I think I hear the most when for involving Diddy. Like, if she still has children alive, like, they, I, I don't know. It's, I, I look at all of that. I, I think that's horrible, though. It is horrible. To say that the that father, it, like, that, their father, you know what I mean? Kill, absolutely. Y'all like, don't, don't think about stuff like that. Um, no, but, they don't you know. they don't think. And then here's another thing. Kim died of pneumonia, according to her medical report. Tell me how you inject somebody with pneumonia. Right. I can I I know that there are oh, here we go back to the poisons. So then y'all say she was <laughs> writing this book. And then here's the thing that this is what annoys me most about I'll be sure I'll be sure listen to y'all ch chit chat and riff raff in them comment sections mm -hmm. just like everybody else. Yeah. So he knows exactly what he needs to say to, to, to fit the narrative. Yeah, that's it. And that's what everyone just wants. Like, it's just attention seeking at its finest. A lot it, of y'all just want attention. It's attention seeking at its core and it's it's so i just don't understand why y'all be be believing this stuff then y'all will say first it's the everybody was writing a book that that died diddy is the only and i'll be sure the only two surviving members of uptown and i'll be sure defied death and that's why he's still here and then it goes on y'all say after they because jaguar Wright even told us oh my gosh now y'all want to that's that's funny too that's so hilarious. The same person everyone was like literally not just a week ago calling nuts. And she don't know what she's talking about. Now she's like, give her her flower. I, I, we do that too. We do that a lot. Yeah. You crazy until it's time to give them their flowers. Yeah. You know, I saw somebody say Orlando Brown need to get his flowers because he's been trying to tell us about how he <laughs> Orlando Brown also said Jay-Z got good coochie. Right. That still doesn't mean that everything they say is the truth. So there may be some truth in there, but doesn't mean that they are like every and everything. They that's why I say about like I don't. I, I've said this to you off, you know, like when we were talking. Everything is not black and white. Like mm -hmm. I feel like that's what social media is turning into. Mm -hmm. There are gray areas. Sometimes people can be telling the truth and lying at the same damn time. Yes, at the same. Yeah, damn it's time. crazy. And how about this? How y'all don't know Jaguar Wright just telling y'all what she heard on the internet too? Right. There it is. Because guess what? I could easily tell y'all I was at Uptown. Yep. And I heard conversations between Andre and, and I'll be sure. Or I could tell y'all I heard conversations. I could tell y'all that I used to go to the same hair salon with Diddy's play cousin. <laughs> and she told me what was. Yes. Like y'all. Yep. Just. It's 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 y'all done wore me out so got darn bad. Yeah, I need y'all to do better. And then what really wore me out? Fifty Cent, Lord, Fifty Cent with oh this, this, this damn little sex workers thing. This is too messy. I want to I want a t shirt that say little sex workers, but I don't want people to think oh I'm a sex worker. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all don't start reading this site, I am going to be one. Fifty Cent <laughs> is awful. He is, you know, it's crazy because someone said. I don't want to like 50 Cent. 
And I have every reason not to like 50 Cent, but something about him is I still find it amusing. And that's where I'm at Mm -hmm. because the parent in me makes me loathe 50 Cent for the way he treats Marquise. Right. But just the one thing that I have always loved about 50 Cent is the very same thing I've always loved about Kate Michelle. When they do interviews, if they don't like Carla, they're going to tell you, I don't like Carla. Right. And this is why I don't like Carla. Right. They're not going to get on there talking about, well, you know, with some people out here in the industry do subliminals, yeah. trying to, you know, you know, some people, they try to pretend they're your friends and then they be doing X, Y, Z. No, 50 mm-hmm. Cent is going to call people out by name. Right. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that I enjoy by him, about him. That's one of the things that I always loved about K. Michelle. Even the times I felt like she should keep her mouth shut. Yeah. Um. But when she opened it, I knew it was going to be a good interview. <laughs> Never failed. True. Be a good interview. Yes, that's the truth. Her and Fifty Cent gonna always deliver. Yeah. And so now Fifty Cent, you know, his baby mama Daphne Joy was listed in the amended version of Little Rod's lawsuit, listing her as one of the little sex workers allegedly. Mm. So Fifty Cent do mm-hmm. what he do. He got on social media, and now everything is like little sex worker this, little sex worker that. Well, then Daphne clapped back by accusing Fifty Cent of the R word and. A physical and sexual assault is yeah. what she did. She says she's tired of protecting his image, so on and so forth. You know, they have their son, 11-year-old sire. And she was like, well, if we want to start talking about people's wrongdoings, let's talk about the real villain in all of this. And then she hit 50 Cent with the sexual, sexual and physical assault allegations. And you said two things can be true. Mm-hmm. And the Carfax report does show that 50 Cent had been arrested prior for some type of assault on a woman. For some type of assault on a woman. And that woman turned out to be Daphne Joy because I remember when their publicist released a statement saying that, you know, well, they had a little tiff, but Uh, they love each other and blah, 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 Mm -hmm. blah, blah. So it's been documented. Right. The sexual assault, I don't know, but I feel like the timing is very, very uncanny. I, I'm one of those people who like to believe women. Right. But that ain't something I'm holding close to the vest to protect your image when I know you've done that to me. Yeah. Even for this, I'll, oh. I'll protect my son. So what? In what instance, if you were, if you were hanging on to this to protect Fifty Cent's image. Even if you were only protecting the image for the son, then he called you a little sex worker Mm -hmm. as according to a documented lawsuit. And you felt like now was the time to air him out. Well, that's why I I think it's it could be that's tough. The timing of it is 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 crazy because the first thing you think about is like it's retaliatory. Right. Because Mm -hmm. of what. You know, 50's on. 50's wrong. 50 is totally wrong. I don't care what their relationship is like. To call your sons to make fun of a situation like that, and that's your child. That's just that's low. That's low. Mm -hmm. It is. He's 11 years old. He can read that. Like we're not talking Mm -hmm. about a baby that can't. Yep. That's low. She's in her. I think she got in her feelings, and I agree. I think the timing of it. Um, but if if there's some documentation that he's assaulted or even if it was physical and it wasn't sexual i feel like if you mm-hmm. if you're capable of assault you're capable of all types of assault Absolutely. It's verbal if you physically assaulted you've already verbally and emotionally assaulted me right there well, it is well, the chances of it are high yep but i'm like you too like the timing and... that's why i'm in a space where i'm like it's... two things can be true right but timing in in the world that we live in now yeah i see that timing has become a huge factor right um, people act like they want thing. If you do not report something three minutes after it happened, then you lying. That's what I said. Who are we to tell a victim when they're the, when they're the, the that's, that's right. The, yeah. You get me? Like, that's right. I feel weird about that. I it do. is because it is, it's a weird thing to do. Yeah. You, there are some people who are suppressing and, and pushing things down that we have no idea that they're yeah. dealing with. Yeah. That is, that's the truth. So you can't tell somebody how to process something, how to put something. I, right. I just don't know. Like this whole thing, Little Rod has literally set an atomic bomb in the middle of the yep. entertainment industry. Yes. It all starts. And, 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 and Little Rod, I'll piggyback. I still say Cassie. I still go back to Cassie. Yeah. Because yep. like, you know what makes it so weird, right? When you start looking at all of this and then 
we're getting all these stories after Cassie and then Little Rod too. Little Rod is mm -hmm. really exclusive. It just shows you like literally these celebrities ain't everybody one degree away from everybody. One so I feel degree. like we're going to literally start seeing more and more people implicated, more and more people getting in their feelings. Because think about it. Like, look at the Daphne situation. Mm -hmm. This all started because of allegations with Diddy, right? Mm -hmm. So now. Now she airs out 50. Right. Here's, oh man. Who happens to be Diddy's. Like new, but new, no, right. like, work that's, yeah, it's, it's all, it's such a mess. All, like how everybody's connected, you know, in the movies when they have all the photos on the wall and have the strings connecting everybody yes, on the wall, that's yes, what it is. It that's is literally what it is. You know Which what I would like, like think about Cuba? Cause I like, we, I'll go back to Cuba Gooden Jr. Like now you even brought him in and then now we're like, all right, well, he was groping already. I think we talked about this last week. <laughs> He's known for groping. No, the way you said so, he, was, he was groping already. Yeah, like we already know that's like. Yep, that's his you mo. Get what I'm saying. That's his mo. So now everything's kind of like linking back to like, okay, this stuff is really starting to really sound like it's the truth, because There's, everything's not going to. You know what I mean? The pieces yes. are starting to. I, I feel like all these allegations that we heard, and even the other people that are implicated, we've heard this stuff before. Or there's factual. Or they've been incriminated. I mean, you know, or they've been convicted, or they settled. Whatever the case may be, you mm -hmm. can always go back and say, "Oh, well, yeah, I remember when they said this or this happened." Here's a nut. Here's here's what I would love to see. Mm -hmm. Well, let me just rewind real quick. What Cassie's lawsuit has showed us, and what Little Rod's lawsuit has showed us, mm -hmm. is that people will sit on a secret. Yes. And people will keep secrets. First of all, not only did Cassie sit on however long she was with Diddy damn near over a decade, 10 years, yeah. almost. I believe it was. A, I don't know why 11 is sitting in my head, but I feel like they were she was with the man for 11 digits. years, I believe, according to what my brain is saying. Mm -hmm. She sat on secrets for 11 years. Do you know what long... the things that she has seen? heard, experienced, saw, right. just all of it, right? Yeah. Lil Rod was at Diddy's house for what, a year while working okay. on the Love album. Why is everybody there always a year? That's something too, that's a common, Usher was there a year. Mm. Like, why does it take, like, mm. no, I'm serious. That's how long the contract. That's a long time. So. But that's a long uh, time to be living with someone. I'm just saying that's a like to live. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he was working. So you're going to know a lot. The reason I'm saying that is you're going to know a lot about that person. You come live with me for a year. You're going to be like, I ain't know that bitch to be. Um, <laughs> she only be washing dishes right after she cooked dinner. <laughs> dishes be sitting in the kitchen overnight. <laughs> what kind of nasty you're ass right. stuff? <laughs> like, you, listen, you come live with me. You're going to learn things about me that you didn't yeah. necessarily know. Even if that it's is something so that I didn't even tell you like That's up true. front. You'll see my mannerisms. You'll see the way yep. I handle myself. You'll see the yep. way I handle other people. Yes. So just alone, just, just think about the magnitude and the amount of secrets that we just got from Cassie and mm -hmm. Rod alone, yep. right? Yeah. Whether or not you believe them to be true, whether or not they are true or are not true, fabricated, embellished, whatever. Right. Think about if we added Misa to that pot, if Kim Porter was in that pot talking, yeah. if Stevie J would tell the truth, because Stevie yeah, J that's a mess tell too. I watched that. the truth. Stevie because, J's talking too much too. Did you see the little clip he did? Yes, with on, yes, but on TMZ, I never seen my brother do anything. To yeah. Stevie J, stop, stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop. Stop. Like at this point, like he was better off just being like, he got to be quiet. It made his case worse. I feel like he made his case worse. I'm going to just be honest with you. Because now you, now you falling into lanes of perjury. Yeah. Like, yeah. They just stop. Yes. Like you can't, what did Harv Stevie know J what he was doing though? Let's, oh, see, Harv let's keep it. Let's Harv keep it. Harv, Harv now. Okay. So think about just in the fold of the secret keepers, right? Mm -hmm. We talking Stevie J. We talking D. Dot Angeletti. Not saying that they um they are guilty. What I'm saying is what they know. Mm -hmm. Think about what Fonsworth Bentley know holding that umbrella running around. Mm -hmm. they, so imagine if everybody in the industry just connected to Diddy or not, right? If everybody in the industry started telling the secrets that they know. But let me tell you why we will never get the full secrets. 
because a lot of people are implicated. Absolutely. Implicate themselves. Yeah, a whole lot of folks. That's why it's so much silence around it. If you really know this, you could hear a rat pissing on cotton around this Diddy. For somebody to be so popular, right? Hmm. Think about how popular Diddy is. Like this this guy threw the best. Everybody's distancing themselves. Mm -hmm. Or you better late, (laughs) though. All of them. All of them. I think maybe Jock and I, I'm trying to think of the ones that are actually speaking out for Jock him. is speaking out for him? A little bit. Yeah, he told one Jock, line Jock. and I don't like it. I'd stop because I don't Jock, like it. I, I got to know the clip. You, t- you know who I want to talk? Who? Mason Betha. That, yeah, listen. That's when I that's don't think will this- ever. I don't think it'll ever happen. That's when that's when the gates of hell gonna flood open. Yeah. If Mace and Betha, because no, y'all, that's the truth. Did y'all forget that Mace has experienced or seen something that made him run from bad boy straight into a church? Exactly. Facts. And back then we wasn't we was laughing, but we when you really look at it, that's deep. For you to go from literally go from bad boy, going from being a million, like being on top of the world as what we would think. What can shine? What can shine tell us? What can Loon tell us? What yep. can G Depp tell us? Shit, what J Lo out here knowing? J Lo, what J Lo know? She went Black. all back to the other side after him. Didn't she? What? Did she go on to the other what? team? <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen, Jenny left the block and everybody else behind. <laughs> she left the whole block. The whole block. Like, just think about the. Facts. Just think about the secret keepers. Yeah. Like, I'll if oh, if Mace, oh, Mace, if you just ever just want to tell us just something, I just, know. Just and child Gene still mm. talking. Gene gonna be Gene said, I'm well, testifying. Gene. All they got to do is subpoena Gene waiting to be subpoenaed. Mm-hmm. Think about the people that actually that's something. Oh, gosh, this we got we on and on. That, that's a whole nother show. Thinking about the people that are going mm. to be subpoenaed, period. Mm. Anybody that was mentioned in Little Rod's civil case, mm. they're getting subpoenaed, I believe. Mm. Um, I didn't write it on the website, but I just will mention it here because probably by next week we'll have more details and and it will be more of a talking point. But there are rumblings that the same attorney that filed Little Rod's lawsuit is now preparing another lawsuit against Christian Combs, accusing him of Mm. sexual assault and drugging a young lady. Mm. That's ugly. And the timing on that is crazy because he just jumped out the window yesterday talking about um, she condemned Homeland Security. I just was about to ask you about that. Was that true? She condemned Homeland Security for their militarized um, raid on Diddy's home. Um, the fact that they put guns to Christian's head, put had red dots on Justin's chest, infrareds, you know, just the Child. old. She, she condemned them for the excessive force that they used going into Diddy's house and saying that they their whole goal was to terrorize innocent young black men. Now, me. Oh, God, stop. They young and they black. And they but men. They, right. And what about so their daddy? The innocent is left to be determined. The daddy wasn't there. What about their daddy? He knew. Listen, that's some. I saw a video of Diddy with a white man in Miami, him and Stevie J, and yeah. they was having a good ass time. So Diddy ain't even. Starting them kids. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's who you take it up with. Don't take it up with Homeland. That's they're doing their job. They're doing their job. I don't. Another I've seen more. I don't know. I don't mean to cut you off, but I've no, seen no, it, and some no. people have experienced it. That's that's what they do when they when they have a search warrant. They do that to everybody. You know, this is what happens when but entitled no. people feel like you know. Go ahead. You said, you said they do it to everybody. Why do my melanated people? The first thing I think, yeah, they didn't. They wouldn't have done this to a, a white family, and they wouldn't have done Come this. Come on, to y'all. A this and they wouldn't have done this to a that. Stop. Stop. I bet you we can go back and find it. Yes, they do, and we can go back. I'm sure, and we just can't think of none. And we can. They they do. Believe me, they do. It's just wild how you know how much effort I put into making sure I pass along accurate information to the best of my ability. Yeah. And y'all question me, but y'all will believe anything. Claudia Jordan ought to be embarrassed to say <laughs> hey, that they opened Al B. Shore's body and it was liquefied. That that's I would I would like I would have had that. Well, it's too late now. It's out there. I'd be trying to rip that down, that audio, that visual, that everything. Like, it never existed. I'd, I'd be like, I was drunk, y'all. 
something. <laughs> I was I was on I was medic. I was on that pink. I was on that pink cocaine. <laughs> I was on that Tucci. Y'all, I was on that Tucci. I believe Diddy had drugged me <laughs> while I was live or my live stream. I don't know how he reached me. Child, everybody now speaking out like, and it's just, it's it's just a mess. We're this is going to be going on for for a long time a long now, time. but it's just getting messier and messier by the um, minute. Yeah, it really is because now I'm not believing anything. I think I saw something where they said MGK. I don't know how true it is, but MGK said he was at a Diddy party and whatever the hell Diddy gave him, he was outside dancing butt naked or something crazy. I'm like now. Here you go wanting to att seeking attention again. Yeah. I'm just trying it's, to see. Some people just out here just he trying seeking to see. seeking attention, or he tired of keeping the secrets. Cause you know, Diddy, <laughs> Diddy did MGK dirty. He threw he threw that white boy away. I know, but MGK just took me as yeah, he did, he did, he did, he did. But he just he, MGK took me as one of them dudes too. That's like a like an Albie sure. I'm sorry. Oh, he just, like attention too. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong though. Like you said, mm -hmm. I completely forgot how he did him. You're right. Yeah, I forgot. Man, about I ain't that. keeping your secrets. You did me dust. You <laughs> threw me to the dust. You, you got know a what? Good point, yeah. You know, they throw people out and they be rolling on the ground in the dirt and the dust bomb come up behind them. That's how he did MGK. <laughs> So I don't True know, that. guys. Um, like Carla said, this is going to be something that will be continually unfolding. I'm still waiting on all the people who claim they was going to counter sue Lil Rod for lying. Ain't mm. seen air suit yet. I mean, we were waiting. We waiting. So, um, yeah. All right. So with that being said, thank you so much for tuning into today's show. As always, we invite you to be a part of the show by dropping down in the comments wherever you listen to let us know your thoughts, views, and opinions on the topics discussed today. Get more scoop by visiting icecreamconvos.com where we serve delicious scoops of entertainment and celebrity news. And be sure to like and subscribe to our podcast. Yes. Carla, you got any parting words for these people who believe anything they see on the internet? <laughs> Y'all, stop. Just please do your do do some damn homework. Stop being lazy. Go at least like you got everybody got a smartphone. At least at least I can't even say at least Google it, but at least try to find two different sources that say the same damn thing. Y'all, it's too Liquified. outrageous. Yo, I can't get over that. I, can't, I think I, that's going to be the title of today's podcast. Liquified. <laughs> that it is. Watch. I feel uh, Black Liquified, Jesus at Linux man. Mall. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Oh, either. Oh, I'm stuck now. I don't know if I want liquefied or black Jesus at Linux. Mm, black Jesus at Linux Mall. I think I'm gonna go with black Jesus oh at Linux gosh. Mall. Yeah. So um, I just want all of you to um, try to live your life to the fullest. Yes. I'm, I don't know if you can fathom living it like every day is your last, but just remember that God got you. Yeah, um, you know, 40. at this point, I'm waiting for people to be like on Facebook, mark yourself safe from Diddy. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> mark yourself safe from Diddy in the comments below. Um, <laughs> and just know that Black Jesus at Lennox Mall is always watching <laughs> and he's looking over you. Even if you ask all Wheaties how sleeping, <laughs> you get to turn on the gospel music. All right. So we love y'all. Thank you for yeah. tuning in. ICC. We all we got. Peace. Love y'all. See ya. Bye. Ice cream conversation. Ice cream conversation. Ice cream conversation.